Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're gonna look at how to build a Docker image, but this is only part one because there's so much to it. Again, we're not gonna try to be expert in this, but just learn enough so that we can continue building Go application that run in very interesting ways on interesting platforms, okay? And then in the next and future videos, I don't know how many more we'll do on this, we'll look at other capabilities of a Docker image, but at least today we'll get started. So before I do that, um, please do me a favor. If you like the material and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you're a returning viewer, it means you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, thank you very much. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for taking the time to subscribe. I will ask you also to try and spread the word, get more people here. And if you want this channel to grow, and I hope you do, um, you will comment and like the videos because that's what the YouTube algorithm uses to push it up to the top when people search so that they can find it. And hopefully we can get this channel to grow and that means that I'll have more time to make more of the videos that you like. Anyway, um, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the love. Uh, I really get good feedback on the channel and I love it. And thank you very much for your patience. Um, note that on my videos, I do not break them to put um, ads, okay? Um, that is one way people make money is by putting ads in their videos. I put ads, I allow, I allow ads at the beginning, at the end of the video. I do not, um, like when I'm watching something that I'm engaging and I'm enjoying and, you know, it breaks for ad. And so I do not do it. So I hope you guys appreciate that. And in return, show your appreciation by, you know, seeing how you can contribute, whether that's financially, you're going to see that towards the end with all the different ways you can do it through PayPal, digital currency, or, you know, the um, Patreon page, or just by making sure that you, know, you comment, like the videos and try to share and spread the word. All right. With that said, let's jump in. What is a Docker image? So, so far we've been using Docker images to create containers, right? So <laughs> that you've seen, you probably didn't get a good feel of exactly what it is. So we're going to talk a little bit about it and then we just jump in and look at examples sort of, and of course build our image. And so an image is a binary object, right? It's not text. It's a binary object. We really can't examine it, but you know, there's a Docker image registry that manages this. And don't worry what exactly the image registry look like. Just think of it as a place that knows all the images you have on your computer or whether locally or off your computer. And it has images that either people contribute or you can push there. And when you go to create a container and you say, I want it to be based off of this image, if it is not local, it pulls it from a registry and you can configure registry where you can pull things from. By default, it knows to go to Docker Hub and pull it. But other than that, and we'll see that later, um, just know that our image registry is just a place that have images and that could be local or remote. Um, again, containers are created from images. So with this one, image you can create many containers we've seen that that we've used the ubuntu image to create many ubuntu containers and once the the, the container is the running representation of this image that's sort of this the static thing um, for people who program in object-oriented programming languages let me just offer you one more analogy an image is like a class the static thing that describe what's the methods are and um, fields of the class, but then you create an object from that class and you could create many, many objects and each object is in itself independent and isolated. Okay. Um, and image specify the dependencies required for a container process. How many processes are inside that container when you create it? That's defined by the image, right? When you create the image, you're going to say what should be running inside of that, um, that container, which files are available, right? So, the image specified the dependencies for the containers processes, the thing that's going to be available. And to that, those processes, when they're running one or more processes in that container when it's running, and that could be files. It can be which ports are exposed, exported or available from that container. And also monked options like their directories um, within the container, as we know, when we run it, it's just a, there's a file system there because it's, you know, sort of like an operating system. And can some of those paths be exported so that oh, you can have access to them from your host? A lot of this seems like, hmm, this is a lot going on. 
what is he talking about? We'll see some of it today and in future videos, but um, I just want to sort of paint you a picture before I actually show you. So let's go and try and build our own container and look at some of these things. So here I am at my terminal and I have Docker running. So I can do Docker PS and you can see whatever I have running here for some time, uh, a couple of hours at least in, in Docker. Um, so I clean up my screen and um, what we can do just to, you know, jog our memory is you can say docker run and I can say minus IT, right? And well, let's do this. If I say docker run and I do the um, cont an image, right? So let's say Ubuntu, for example, um, I can create a container, but that container is going to exit immediately because I have no way to interact with the process, which it starts a bash process, but since the bash is not doing anything, you're not at the console, it's gonna start and run. So this container would immediately exit. And so let me prove this to you by doing Docker PS, and then piping it to a minus A for everything that has ever run, run in this um, here as a container. And then I'm gonna do grep minus I exited because um, I know that I'll, if I run a container and it's exited, you can see I have one here that was exited three weeks ago. So if I do Docker um, run and then UBUNTU, and again, this is gonna run really quickly and exit. And so you can see um, I had a container that was created and exited a few seconds ago. So I'll clean that up, Docker RM. And since it's not running, I can just simply remove it. Okay. so. That was easily enough, but what I can do is when I go to run my container, I can give it my minus RM to say, remove this container once I'm finished with it. And you can see when I do that, even though the container was created, run just like before, it got cleaned up. And so when I do this now, you can see that oh, that container is not there. So that's great. But still, how do we get access to the container that we're running? So I can do minus minus. Uh, minus IT for interactive terminal. And because this container is specified to run the bash shell, that's the command it's gonna run, and we're gonna see a little bit about that later. Um, I can do this, and now I have access to that shell. And so if I do PS, you can see it all. The process, number one, the very first process is this bash shell, and I'm able to connect to it. Now I just run the PS command itself, but um, so that is the only process within here, and it was exiting before. Remember, for container, it starts up a process, and once that process completes, well, everything that was associated with the process um, dies. Now, you can have multiple processes running, but the one process would spawn multiple process. But once that one process completes, the parent process, then the container just exits, and that's what was happening. Okay, so now we're all good. We have our container running, we're in it. Notice that the current working directory that this container, the Ubuntu, is placing me in is slash, right? Which is like the root of my file system. But I also have my own directory as root the user, um, my home. And so that's gonna be this directory here, which is different from the home directory where other users are placed. But anyway, I'm in my home directory for the root user, because I am I am logged into this container as root. As you can see, there's nothing in this directory. And so one of the things I can do is I can, for example, say that I wanna make a directory called A, B, and overlay, for whatever reason I wanna do this. <laughs> and if I do that, and you can see if I ls now, I can see that directory there. Now, if I was to exit this container right now, it would get cleaned up and all those files would go away. And maybe I'm doing some work in this container. I've spent some time fixing up this container in such a way that I want to be able to create more containers like it. So one of the things I can do is commit this container as an image and now I have an image that is based off of Ubuntu, but with the slight modification of the things that I've done in the container to make it different. So let me let me show you what I mean. So let's imagine that oh, this creating this directory A, B, and overlay is just one of many things that I've done in this container. So for example, um, if I try to 
run the tree command here, for example, it's not available. And if I try to do apt install minus Y for yes, I do want to install this thing. Don't prompt me because um, it's going to prompt me. If it, yeah, you sure you want to install? And I want to say minus Y, yes. And I say install the tree command. It's saying, oh, you know what? I don't have any information on this. I read my package list, my local repository for um, packages, and I do not have this package for tree command. So what I can do is say app update. And essentially, I'm telling Ubuntu um, Package Manager, app is the Debian Package Manager, to go out, fetch updates from all these different repositories, and um, then now see which what applica packages are new, what's that you don't know, update essentially your local database. And so now it's done that and it says, oh, when I finish updating externally, I have 27 packages that are already installed that you know, you can upgrade. So one of the things I can do is I can upgrade those packages, but the one I want to show you is now I can rerun and install my tree command because now it knows about it. And so I have tree install. Okay, great. Um, and while I, I'm at it and we already have, you know, um, an updated version of Ubuntu here, why not update our Ubuntu that we're running since we plan to save it as a an image so that the next person who, or when we create a con containers from this image that we're going to save, is already going to have the updated um, packages, right? So we're going to say apt distribution update, like for example, I could do distribution update, distribution update, ah, come on, upgrade, upgrade, if I can type. And I should type minus Y because it's going to prompt me. So yes, fine, whatever. I could have just entered and noticed that it had a capital Y there, meaning that, oh, this is going to be the default if you just enter. So I could have just enter, but OK. So it's going through and it updated a number of things. doesn't matter. We can look back and see what exactly it's updated, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is get another terminal here. Now that I have a second terminal open, notice the one on top, I'm still in the exact same container. I just finished updating it. And so what I can do is do Docker. And if I enter like this, you'll see all the Docker subcommands. And there's one command here called commit. And it says create, you know, create a new image from a container's changes. That's exactly what we would like to do, is take all the changes that I've made in this container that above here, turn it into an image. And once I have an image, I can create new containers from that image that I've just created. And I'm set to go and reuse it several times. So let's see how we use this um, commit command. So we type commit minus H for help. And we can see that it's very easy, simple command is commit some options, you know, the author string, um, change list, we can put some stuff, apply Docker file instruction to the created image. We don't, have, we're going to ignore that. Um, message string, so now commit message given a full description of what's new in this image or different about what it's based from. We can pause the container, which means that if it's actually running and making changes to the file system, by pausing it, we can able to create our image at a point in time. I suppose if we try to create an image while there are changes being made to the file system, we might have some inconsistencies when we try to now create a a container from it, we might have files that are partially written, things like that. You know, that's so we probably don't want we want it to be paused, and that's the default, right? Because that's the most consistent and best behavior for creating a what we say a good image. Um, so now let's get this image ID, and so we can see we're not going to specify any options and we're going to put the container, and then there's this repository slash tag. And for now, I will ignore that. And I'll just simply come back to the bottom here and rerun this and then put our container ID. And notice this is the ID for our container, 77C0. And I run this and it's created an image with this ID, which is something completely different. I'm gonna copy just a few characters from that. And if I do Docker images, or you can do either images or Docker image list and you enter, you'll see all the images here, and you can see I had some images from, um, you know, a ton of images, and these are, let me scroll up to the top. I have quite a bit of images. So there's the tag. I remember that command, it had um, this tag, repository and tag. So here's that tag. Some of these have none, some have like latest, some like as a version. So you could think of that as the tag. And then the repository, so here's the repository, and some of these have none, but then you can see that some of these have, um, you know, essentially 
by name, forward slash, blah, 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 or just simply Nginx, or you'll see some of them will just say MariaDB or something like that, right? So you can think of the repository as a company slash user, um, company or user, and then you can put a slash to specify, like, so Veril created some, this, this application and this other application, and then, you know, you can tag them. Okay, so we did not tag our image, we just, um, got an ID for it. And so let me see, where did that one show up? And it created this one, ECD, blah, 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 37E. And if you remember, that is indeed correct. You know, ECC 37E. And that's the first part of this very long SHA values. And so now that we have that image ID, what we can do is create a container from it. So what I'm going to do is exit out of here and remember, once I exit, that container is gone. How I know it's gone, let's verify we can see that I do not have a container that exited a few seconds ago because it's gone now. All the changes that I've made is now lost in that, con that container that was removed. But remember, what we did was committed that container as an image first before we exited. So all our changes now are captured in this container, this guy. So if I do, Docker run minus, and let's do minus RM again, and minus, because we can create many of these, and minus IT. And now I'm going to paste that um, ID, which is the very same thing I have below here. I have a few more bytes, but that's okay. Two more bytes. And so I run it. And notice I'm back in that container. I'm still in the same location because the container I built, built it off of Ubuntu by default puts you in the current directory, your current directory as slash, but I can CD and go into my root directory and notice I have that A, B, you know, those three directories I created in that previous container. And also if I do um, the tree command, it's there, right? So I have updated this, the base image with my changes. And now when I create container from, you know, my new image, I have all those changes, everything that was there before, the Ubuntu files and everything, plus what I've added, the changes I've made. And so, of course, if I do app update, we it's still gonna run the update commands, but what you're gonna see is that everything is up to date because the image I built, based it off of, had the latest changes. I won't expect any changes between the five minutes that we're doing this. All right, so now you're convinced that oh, I can make a container, and this seems like one interesting or easy way to make a container. Just spin up a container from some image, make some changes to it, commit it, have it as your new image. And that certainly is a way to go. That certainly works. And so what we can do though, is that we don't want to remember image IDs. What we really want is a repository and put optionally a tag associated with it. So what we can do is we know the container ID already is that we can do Docker and we can tag an image, right? So we can create a tag image that refer to some source image, right? And so the tag is just a name that you can associate with the um, same image. So you can have multiple tags for the same image. And what that means is if you do the Docker images list, you will see that oh, these image IDs might appear multiple times with different um, tags because you may tag the same image as, you know, my awesome app or app that is next, that's new, all this other stuff, right? So that could come in handy because you might want to tag a certain image as, you know, let's say, Veril app, awesome app version 5.3. And also tag the same thing as Veril awesome app latest. And so if I want to spin up containers, I can always do Veril awesome app latest and know that I get the latest version. Then when I create a new image, I can tag that again as version five and also the tag latest. And so the latest would keep moving to the newest image, but I will still be able to identify those previous one by their version. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry, we'll see an example of it later. Not today, but in another video. So let's just tag this image. So let's do Docker and um, again, tag minus H for help. And now we can say Docker tag. And the way you tag an image is given the source image, optionally a tag if it has one, and then you know, a new target image and tag. So we can say that though we want to use 
this got bit over here, right? Um, which is the, the image ID that we have. And then the tag I want to give it is, I'm going to call it Veral, let's call it Straversity. Straversity slash, um, I don't know. There's no app in here, but we'll call it app one. And then um, if we want to give it a, a tag, so this word tag is being overused, um, overloaded here. And so we can call it maybe version, you know, one that oh, for example. And so we can enter. And now when we do Docker images, images or image list, if you like, and I do grep and I do straight versity, you can see that um, we have this traversity forward slash app. So you can think of this as a company name for slash app. And then we tagged it and we give the tag of version 1.0. And notice it's pointing to the same image. And I could, again, create another tag and I'm call this one, let's say, latest. And now when I do this, now you can see I have two tags for the same image okay all right so that makes it super easy now for us to you know again so i'll leave this container running and you notice already we can have multiple containers we could say run minus it minus rm i'm going to remove that and now i can say the image i want to use is triversity app one and if i leave this out it's going to do the latest um, and so i can just say run that and notice we have yet another container with the exact same base of the same image and we can do um, cd ls and we can see that though we have the same files we can do app update and it should be completely up to date we have the tree command and if i make changes here so for example if i make a directory let's call it c for example and i ls and you can see c there notice these two are complete different completely different images it's like i said from programming the image act as the blueprint, like a class, but then once you can create containers for them and they're all very separate. And so now let's exit and clean up those and exit from here and clean up. And so there you go. We have successfully created an image and we have tagged it. Now I said there's another way to create an image and using this thing called a Docker file. If we go to docker.com website and then we go to developers and then developers and then down to docs and then we go to reference we can see that oh it has file format and this thing called a docker file and it says define the contents let me zoom in a little bit define the contents and startup behavior of a single container okay and then there's this compose files to define multiple container application but we'll talk about that later and so if we click on Docker file, we'll see it says here that oh, you can use this command Docker build to build a, um, an image. So I just wanna show you very quickly how that is done. So let me CD here into uh, part one. I have this directory called part one for building Docker images and there's nothing in it. So let's clean up. I'll do Visual Studio Code in here. And like I say, one way you can use, build a Docker image is by using this Docker file. So let's create it. And the file must have this name with the same case as Docker file. And the very first thing that you must put in a Docker file is to say, what are you building this new image based off of? Like it must have a base. And so for that, you say from. And notice it says from base. And it says set the base image to use for sub subsequent instruction from must be the first instruction. So you, a Docker file is basically a set of instructions and then their options. So in this case, we can use the um, Golang as a base image, or we could use Ubuntu, which is what we've been using for such um, um, so far. And so now we have Ubuntu as our base. Now, what do we want to do to customize it? This just means what we have to start with. And so there's another command called the run command. And so again, if you notice these commands for the Docker files are usually in caps and they come first followed by whatever option. And we're gonna learn more about each of these commands in the next video and subsequent videos. And one of the things we can do is use run the Linux echo command. So this allows you to run a Linux command 
within when you're building that container. And so the run command, again, we'll learn more about it later. Whatever it says, it's while it's building that image, it runs this command. This is not what happens when you have a container to command that run. This is why while you're building it. This is a way to make changes to the container based off of Ubuntu so that you can create a new image from it. So let me say that another way. Each time you run a you have a run command, it's essentially going to force create a container based on your base image, run that command in that container, commit the container like we have done, and then now that becomes an image, right? And that is an image that represents the changes that you made by running this command based off of this base image. And you could have multiple of these run com command as you will see. So let's do this. Let's do hello run echo hello world. And so we'll just use this guy. No, this doesn't actually make any changes to that container, right? I mean, this is all cute and everything. It is a command. And you will see that oh, when I go back here and I say, this is the only file I have. I say Docker build and dot to say build this current directory. You will see that oh, it is going to say it's building a an image. And it says step one is from step two is run this command. Hello world. And notice there's the output of running this command while it's building this image. And notice every time it's doing a command, notice what it says. It's running this inside of this container. You see, running in this container. And then it says removing intermediate container because what it did, it committed this container as this image. And so now we have this image that was committed from this container. And all it is is that because we run this command. But remember, no changes would have come from simply running this command. But Docker doesn't care about that. You said build an image and you know that's the command you want to run. It doesn't know if you have a side effect of a result of running this command or not. But we do have um, a new image. And this should be identical in, in respect to this guy because we didn't do anything. But you know, it looked like Ubuntu here had a different um, image ID. Okay, so that's not going to be exciting. So I don't want to create a, I don't want to create a container from that because we didn't do anything. But let's just actually make some changes now to that, um, that container. So let's do this. And we, if you remember, what we did was we did the mkdir command. And we say make a directory A, make a directory B, make a directory overlay, All right? And we also said what? We said we should do apt update, right? And then after that, we did a run and we did apt install minus y and we did tree command. Okay, those are the commands that we run inside. Let me get rid of all this stuff. Uh, those are the commands we run inside of our image and then save it. So now we're putting those in our Docker files now. And remember, everything we did before, we created a container from, from Ubuntu. We ran these commands in it, these three. Then we say commit. What Docker build command is doing is essentially the same thing. It's going to create a container from Ubuntu base image run these command and every time it finish running a command, it will, whatever container create is going to commit it as an image, then use that image to create another container, run the next command, commit that the changes from that container as an image, then use that image to run the next command. So that's why these are going to be end up being stages. And you should see, we should have about five stages here. All right, so let's go back and let's do that. Again, so I'll just close this. I don't think we need this. And I'll run the build command again. And you should see that all the same thing happened. We had five stages. And let me just show you because our L command resulted in this image the previous time, and we haven't changed that, it's going to say it's using cache. So that's good. It's using something that's already built because there wasn't any new changes. But then notice what, how it run make directory in this container. It would have created this, um, committed this container as an image. Well, here it is saying that out of this container came this image. It removed that container, used this image now to create another container. It's running this app update in this container. And next thing it's going to do is when it's finished, remove that intermediate container. But now it has a new image, which is going to use to create yet another container here run this install in that container, then it's going to remove it. But before it remove it, it committed it as an image. And now our final image is this, right? And 
we can test this and confirm. We can do docker run minus minus rm because we want to clean up minus it and let's put our image here our final image here and we do this and notice we're in the same directory as this guy but if we cd here and we do ls oh look at that we don't have our files here what happened let's see if we have the tree command oh that worked we have the tree command well what about app get update well that seemed to have worked also it says everything is up to, well this we didn't install actually our updates but you notice how this is just three outputs as opposed to a much longer output so that kind of that we didn't run the update command to actually do the update so what happened to our make directory actually because our current directory was ls when we run the command to make directory here they are we have the a b and overlay directory in slash because that was our current directory what we needed to do was actually change our working directory to root, then run our command. So I'll do exit here to get out of this container. It seemed like we made a mistake, so we need to go back and fix a few things. So before we run any command to make directory, what we should do is change our working directory, and there's a command for that, and we wanna change it to root. And so if we make working directory root, which means from this point onward, right, set the working directory for any subsequent add copy or whatever command. We don't really care about those other ones right now. We care about run. So our run command is gonna run in the con with this as the working directory. So when we do make directory or anything, it's gonna be with this directory in mind. So we should now see our A, B and overlay directory in root. It doesn't matter for apt. We can actually move these guys up because this is updating the system, um, you know, making changes to our um, environment and we could put these for us and then we could do the customization you can think of all this is customizing our image but this seems to be more system-wide which just seem to be more local so I tend to put these after and remember we forgot to do was install so we should do apt um, distribution upgrade dash upgrade and then minus y to install it and what this is going to do if i had made this a separate command we will now have you know whatever another step and again remember every run make the changes in that container and then commit it so why not combine all of a few of these so we have fewer stages so what i'm saying here is run the update command and if that's successful then run the distributor this upgrade this um, distribution upgrade command with minus y and then run the install tree command and so yep let's see if um that we should now try to build things um okay so let's do docker build again and you should see we have five steps stage steps but notice that we have five steps because we've combined about in one command we have like three command versus if we had separated out we'll have like seven steps okay two extra commands so we're doing the upgrade now the um, distribution update upgrade and we have now completed our image and there we go and so now if we do docker run minus yep let's do that take this out and use our new image that we just created and now notice because our working directory was set to root we actually start our container with us being in the correct directory or at least the directory we think we want to be in which is root and notice that our files are there the tree command is there and if we do apt update you see all packages are up to date so now we have finally recreated what we did by hand in a container by being able to make it something that is programmatic we can commit these changes we can enhance it over time you see when you do it in the container and then you commit the container that is when you sort of want to do hot up things and you're not sure exactly what you're really doing blah 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 if you can sort of script it out, this is a way of sort of scripting it out, right? Using the Docker, um, Docker file command, then that is more repeatable. So you always want to try to have a repeatable build. This is something you can review, you can give to somebody else. Notice when we had a problem before, we were able to come in and add our working directory and so on and just you know update things. So this is event essentially the way you're going to want to start building com um, container images. Um, instead of doing it the way we started off, which is build it, create a container, make changes, and then commit it. Okay, all right, so I think that's enough for now. So I'm gonna end the video here. Again, remember, if you've gotten here and you haven't subscribed yet, 
please subscribe. If you find an issue with a video, please let me know. I appreciate constructive feedback. So that would be something like, you know, something was wrong or the quality or something like that. Please be kind and just let me know and I'll try and work to fix it. Other than that, you know, give a thumbs up, um, try and spread the word. And like I said at the beginning of this video, you were able to watch this video without me um, not put, interrupting you and give, having you watch some, you know, commercial break or anything like that. So I hope that all you appreciate being able to focus on the content and not be distracted. So please help me grow the channel. And then if you can contribute, here are some ways you can contribute either through PayPal, Patreon, or through any one of these digital um, addresses. Hopefully I was able to teach you something today and help you um, understand Docker a little bit more. Take care. Thanks for your time. Be safe. See you in the next video. Bye.